and uh, welcome to this online event hosted by Methodist Evangelicals Together as part of Festival at Home. I'm David Hull, Chair of Met, and our theme is Sharing Jesus Today. We're going to be taking the opportunity in, in just a small way in the time available to celebrate the ministry of Rob Frost and his ongoing legacy in this 20th anniversary year of Share Jesus International, the organization he founded he founded it in 2001, just six years before he died in 2007. Rob was a Methodist minister with a hugely influential ministry as an evangelist. He was a great supporter of Methodist Evangelicals Together and our predecessor organisations, and the impact of his ministry continues to this day. There are so many people we could have spoken to today, so we've had to narrow it down, and we have three very special guests Jackie Parkinson, who was Rob's wife, Andy Frost, Rob's son, now director of Share Jesus International, and Carolyn Lawrence, the vice president of the Methodist Church this year. It's great to have you all with us. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to uh, meet you one by one and hear from you briefly now, and then we'll launch into a proper conversation uh, with each of you in turn. So Jackie, uh, let's uh, hear from you first. A very warm welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you, you had a, a front row seat through all the development of Rob's ministry and you played a, a massive part in helping it all come to be. Uh, and I think you had a, a very creative focus in, in what you did. So tell us, uh, what was the vision at the heart of it all in those early days? OK, well, I definitely learned exactly what Rob was about not long after getting married, because one week after our wedding day, he actually took me on a gospel road show. And we spent our nights sleeping on church floors separately. So that was my introduction. And we just took drama and music around with us. And it was just really just to share Jesus. And then after that, we traveled on our holidays to places like Spain to work in hotel foyers. And then to the, even to America, working in shopping malls. And we even went to Cliff College, which is a place uh, Rob really loved because that's where he felt that he um, was given the encouragement um, to to follow through his heart for God. And then we carried on with lots of other different productions, Daybreak and Visions and lots of other ones. And I think the main emphasis of Rob was uh, big scale events, but that included individuals with all their gifts. So his view was for the big, but actually for the individuals within it. That's wonderful. And it's going to be great to hear in a little while about your creative work these days, too. Uh, let's welcome first Andy Frost, uh, current director of Share Jesus International. Um, Andy, welcome. This is uh, the 20th anniversary year of SJI, which uh, grew out of uh, Rob's ministry. You're the director now. So tell us, uh, what is the vision that has driven SJI all these years? Yes, yeah, it's been amazing to look back over the last 20 years and see what God has done, really. So many different projects. But again, as the mum said, Ultimately, it's about individuals, people discovering what it is to be in relationship with God, and people discovering their calling as well. I guess for the, the vision continues to be the same. It's about sharing Jesus, it's about uh, faithfully presenting the gospel in a relevant way. We actually understand and make some kind of response to the Christian faith. Thank you. We'll ask you more about the work of SJI today in a little bit. Um, but how wonderful also to have the vice president of the Methodist Church with us. Um, Rob Frost's ministry has left a, a long lasting legacy within the Methodist Church. So, Carolyn, tell us um, about the impact that Rob had on you and, and your family. Yeah, well, uh, for, for many years, we used to go to Easter people when the, the children were young. And uh, that had a real impact on us as a family because uh, my husband's a minister now, but uh, we had felt the call into full time ministry for a long time. But um, I'd been resisting it. And uh, through it, it was at East People that we both came to the point where we felt able to accept God's call on our lives. Uh, but also it was a real encouragement to us being part of the Methodist Church to go somewhere and worship with lots of people uh, and people who knew what it was like being in a, in a Methodist church. And, um, uh, and, uh, and one of the most powerful things was the impact it had on our children. Our, our eldest daughter made her first commitment to Jesus at Easter People when she was seven. And, uh, and, and both our girls are still going on with the Lord now and bringing up their children in the Lord. So, uh, so it's something, it's part of, uh, part of Rob Frost's ministry that I, I'm continually thankful for. How wonderful, how wonderful to have a, a vice president in this 20th anniversary year whose family was so impacted um, by Rob's ministry. Um, it's going to be wonderful to hear from each of you about the ways in which you're sharing Jesus today. So let's talk a little more in depth 
one by one. At the heart of all that we're celebrating today is the belief that the Lord has given us all gifts, each and every Christian, whoever we are, gifts to use to share Jesus. Rob's great passion was to encourage and enable people to use their gifts at every opportunity. So Andy, first then, um, tell us more about your passions as Director of Share Jesus International and some of the projects that you're working on today. Well, I'm really passionate about having to share and communicate the Christian faith. That's why I do what I do. And I guess I love working with different churches, looking at how we can become more intentional and possible on this battle of faith and sharing our communities. Do a whole variety of different projects, whatever, being creative, I guess, and working out new ways of doing things. Uh, recently held our Ecclesia Conference for church leaders, had about 200 church pastors from around the UK as part of that, from different denominations, looking really at how do we, as a church, stay relevant today? How do we um, meet the needs of society? We looked at youth work, we looked at mental health issues around race, and really looking at how we as a church can represent something of who God is in society and share the Christian message as well. So we're always doing a whole variety of different projects, lots of stuff online now using videos as well, a real mixed bag of things. Wow, and uh, you're doing it in very creative ways. You're trying to find, uh, always finding new ways of sharing the gospel and engaging people. And sometimes you do that in very dangerous ways as well. <laughs> so, not always too dangerous, but yeah. I think um, the, the Christian message hasn't changed, but the way in which we communicate has to always change and evolve. The world is so different to how it was 20 years ago when SGI first began. So particularly now the online digital world is so important. How we as the church engaging with that? We've seen in the last, uh, in the last year, with COVID, just the impact of being online, how we need to position ourselves in the online space as well. And so for me, for the last number of years, we've been looking at how we can really present the gospel faithfully online. I've done a whole series called The World That Changed, uh, sorry, The Week That Changed the World, which explores the Easter story um, online using visuals and graphics. And a whole kind of mini adventure series called The Adventures of the Ginger Vicar and the Bolding Bishop, which I think is a danger you're hinting to there. It's really been about travel and about experience, but at the same time presenting the gospel faithfully, help to discover more of what the Christian faith is all about. Wow. And one of the things that strikes me about Share Jesus International is the focus that there's always been uh, on the local church. That uh, It's about, as Jackie was saying earlier, uh, often big scale events, but always with a focus of encouraging uh, local churches as well and Christians in local churches. We've been living in very unusual times recently. So how, how would you encourage us in our local churches to share Jesus more faithfully? Yeah, I think, first of all, as lockdown eases now and a new normal begins to emerge, we need to be thinking about the whole digital space still. We can't just ignore that now. We see actually how we work in person, but also in a digital world and think through the implications there. And there are so many needs now as we begin to rebuild and, I guess, recover in our places post-COVID. The church, I believe, has a key role to play. The danger is the church becomes pushed to one side and society takes on those roles instead. But I think the church has a role to play both prophetically. We've seen the real divide between the rich and the poor in this, um, this, this last year and how we can challenge that, but also how we can serve practically very much in, in food provision, in job creation, in a whole variety of practical ways. But the whole time bringing things together to being an um, integral mission, I guess, the idea of bringing the different parts together that we care about the whole person. We want them to be out of debt, we want them to have a job, we want them to be, have a good mental health. But as part of that, we also want to know what it is to be known by Christ and to live for him. And I guess for me, uh, as we're sharing the Christian faith, we ultimately want people to know their identity isn't in what they have done, their mistakes, their successes, but ultimately is in who God says they are. And so for me, as I'm looking at how we can, as a church, respond in this moment, it's about serving practically, but at the same time, making sure we are threading the Christian gospel through all that we do. Hmm. What's been one of the most encouraging things for you that you've encountered during these uh, lockdown days? I think personally, we've done a whole variety of things uh, locally. Um, I've been doing kind of children's work on a Sunday morning because our, our, our youth, our children's worker resigned before COVID. So I've taken on children's work. And it's been amazing, I guess, even using Zoom on a Sunday morning, trying to do kids songs uh, on a kind of live Zoom chat with all these kids. But I guess it's been fascinating seeing the guess some of the things that have taken place there I guess partly the role that parents play in passing on faith and to be able to not only speak to kids, but run to people's homes and actually help equip parents in passing on the back of their faith and to challenge parents too about their own walk with God. So there's been a real interesting thing in how we see family life going forwards in terms of ministry. I think we're really encouraged by Alpha and morning prayers. We've been running morning prayers the last few weeks and a couple of guys from my football team have been involved and joined us, got no kind of faith background, but we really wanted to engage with this a moment of prayer. Ran an alpha course for those guys who've got no Christian faith at all, but 
I guess when everything was put in the air, they were questioning about, well, what is life really all about? Everything I thought was secure suddenly isn't. In that moment, it's been a great opportunity to run an alpha course to engage with those questions and see people come to faith. So I feel like I'm excited that in this very challenging and difficult time, when so much is, um, I guess, up in the air, that despite all of that, that this shaking has caused people to think about some bigger questions about meaning and purpose and what life is all about. And I just hope the church takes this opportunity to really present the gospel faithfully and relevantly. Mm, and it's wonderful that Share Jesus International is playing its part in helping us to do that. You're involved in so many different projects. How can we find out more about your work? Well, the website is sharejesusinternational.com. Find also information on there, also our videos on our YouTube channel too, which is um, SJI News on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andy. Let's uh, now turn to your mum, Jackie Parkinson. Uh, so, um, Jackie, you have uh, had a, a very creative approach to sharing Jesus. Tell us how that came into being. Well, I think when I was married to Rob, I used to think that he was this great evangelist, which he was. So really, I wasn't, I didn't have to do anything. I was okay. I could just stay in the background. But I think I kind of discovered that we all have a role to play and that all of us, if we believe in Jesus, have a kingdom um, to bring in with him. And so I discovered mine in the arts. I set up the Lantern Arts Centre in 1997 and worked there for 16 years, really enjoying just being part of a group, sending work on the road with Rob, directing things, and just enjoying that whole idea of being part of a team. Then on the 1st of January 2003, we were sat, Rob and I, in a cafe, and Rob had a massive long list of his New Year's resolutions, all his plans, all his spiritual targets. And he looked at me and said, so what are you going to do? <laughs> and I said, I haven't got any. He said, come on, you have to have at least one New Year's resolution. So I said, OK, then I'd like to do a bit of stitching. OK, and now I do a bit of stitching. <laughs> I went back um, to uni and did another degree, which I really enjoyed. And then I always knew that I wanted to do big work, probably because of my background in theatre with the large sets. And um, I always wanted to know, knew I wanted to do Bible based work because I just really loved the Bible. And then fortunately, the Deo Gloria Trust were looking to go into cathedrals. So I invited myself alongside them and said, would you not like some visual images to go along with your words? And that started a really lovely relationship. So we did 11 sets of panels. And one of those sets is Good Grief, which is actually based on, um, on the death of Rob. It's my raw grief, really, at that event in my life. And, um, and they travel around lots of the different cathedrals in England. So that uh, was brilliant. And actually, at the moment, they're just being transferred from panels into banners so that anybody can um, hire them if they would like to for their churches or community hall or hospice centre, anything. So that's the plan for those. And then um, I decided in 2013 to go even bigger. And uh, I love the book of Revelation because it's actually full of visions and images and pictures. So for me, it's like a storybook. And I really like the idea that God ends his Bible with a storybook for us artists. I think that's just lovely. And it's the mystery of it. It's not all factual and academic. And it's just this lovely, fluid thing. So I started looking at all the images and I tried to represent them on large panels. And, um, and they toured for three years around different cathedrals in England and they were seen by about half a million people. And it was just fantastic looking at the comments books because, you know, some people wept, some people said, I'm not a Christian, but this has made me think. Other people have just been um, inspired to do their own work. So it's just been a real encouragement just to know that just sitting by myself in my studio stitching can be a form of work. So it's just about finding our own voice, really. And I think in stitching, I found mine. And um, I've just finished, actually, just last week, the last panel of Threads Through Creation. So wow, I'd, that's do, I'd, love to, uh, I'd love to ask a bit more about that. I just wanted to say, first of all, though, I think because I think it was the last time I saw you was in Salisbury Cathedral, I think, which was for okay. the uh, launch of Threads Through Revelation there. 
and, and, and it's launching Threads Through Creation is launching there this August, hopefully. Really, isn't that amazing? And, and certainly Threads Through Revelation was just um, astounding and uh, amazingly beautiful work. And and I, I've I've seen a, one of the prints of your Threads Through Creation. So yes, do tell us about uh, about how things are developing with that. Okay, that looks at the first three books, uh, three chapters of Genesis, and it just looks about how everything started good. So Revelation is how everything finishes good, and creation is how everything started good, and it goes as far as the fall. And um, and I'm just planning at the moment <laughs> a third exhibition, which will be the final exhibition, and that's Threads Through the Cross. And actually, that's the messy bit in the middle, so it's a bit after the good and before the good, it's a bit in the middle, the messy bit, the messy bit that we live in and the messy bit which actually the cross stands in. So Threads Through the Cross is all about Jesus and his death on the cross and his resurrection, ascension and Pentecost because Jesus still lives. Wow. So, yeah, showing how it started good, how it ended, yeah. how it ends good. Um, yeah. And it goes through a real mess in the middle with the cross and representing all of that in stitches which is just um stunning and you say that's going to be the last exhibition so we have to then watch this space to see what happens for jackie parkinson beyond uh well i have one last dream my ah. last dream is that all three of them one day might be shown in the same place or in a few places but in total they will be 80 meters in length side by side so we're looking for big spaces but that's my dream that's amazing. I mean, that, that is phenomenal. So um, they've got th these tours are coming up. And I suppose if anybody knows of a, a great big space that they would like to have it all in, then they can get in touch with you and, uh, and, and you can uh, be in conversation with them about that. Um, how can we um, be in touch with you and how can we uh, find out more about your... Um... I have a website that's just being updated at the moment and it's Jackie, which is J-A-C-Q-U-I-Textile.com. Wonderful. Jackie, thank you so much. It's uh, amazing to hear about all that uh, you're developing to share Jesus so creatively. Um, and thank you so much for being with us today. So let's turn now to Carolyn Lawrence, the Vice President of the Methodist Church this year. Carolyn, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. And it's been a very unusual year with the um, pandemic restrictions. Tell us, what's it been like being Vice President this year? What have been some of the highlights? Yeah, it's been very strange with uh, with lockdowns and restrictions and not being able to travel any of the places that I thought I was going to go. So there's been a lot of disappointments, but God's been really good and there's been a lot of blessings through the year. And uh, I think one of my highlights was going to Brazil last year when uh, I managed to get my overseas visit in just before COVID struck and all the lockdowns happened and seeing how wonderful the church is there in Brazil and how exuberant and passionate they are about sharing Jesus and how their church is growing. And also hearing stories as I've met people through technology uh, about the creative ways that people are engaging with their communities and sharing the love of Jesus. It's just been really inspiring. And, and I've perhaps met more people through Zoom than I would have done in real life if I had been traveling. So, uh, so God is good. Wow, so there have been some real blessings in the middle of uh, all the difficulties of the pandemic. And um, what have been some of the opportunities then to share Jesus during this vice presidential year? Yeah, there's been more opportunities perhaps than, than if I had been travelling around because I've been asked to do a lot of video recordings and broadcasts uh, and radio interviews and write articles and uh, and things for people's churches and also to go to small groups of people to to talk and and share you know bible study or whatever so uh, i think that um there's been more opportunities than i expected and one wonderful opportunity was uh, i was invited to speak to a group of women in guatemala um about their value to the lord and uh, so late one night I was on Zoom speaking to women in Guatemala. So there's been a load of opportunities. And I've just at the beginning of the year, I just prayed that, you know, you know I offered myself for this role as offering to serve Jesus and glorify him in any way I can. And there's been more ways of uh, sharing Jesus than I would have ever imagined possible. Wow. And, uh, what, what's been then the overriding message that, that you have been longing to share with the Methodist people and perhaps more widely with the Christian church as you have served as vice president this year? Yeah, well, as Andy said, you know, there's a there's a real need out there for Jesus anyway. But um, but I think with the pandemic, it's really highlighted that need. And there's a lot of people searching for belonging and community and for hope. 
And so, uh, you know, I've really been trying to encourage people to uh, share their faith and to get out there um, and be in the community, to build relationships with people, uh, to practically show God's love to people and shower them with grace uh, so that they know how much God loves them. Uh, and as I always do, trying to encourage people to be relevant and to, uh, you know, be natural and, new, you know, with people, not trying to sort of, you know, force God into conversations. Uh, and also to be normal, you know, I always say, you know, you don't have to be weird to be a Christian. And people often think Christians are weird, but we can be normal and have fun and uh, and relate to people in a normal way. And uh, and I really believe that we need to do what we can and not what we can't. And sometimes it might be a small thing we can do showing the love of Jesus, uh, but other times it might be big things. And, you know, I, be I truly believe that as hearts and lives individually are transformed by Jesus, then they go on to transform communities and, and the nation and the world. So uh, I really want to encourage people to, you know, just ask God where he's showing them and who he's leading them to so that they can share the love of Jesus, you know, even as they go out and about on their daily walk. Wow, wonderful. Be normal, have fun, shower people with grace and do what you can <laughs> in all sorts of small ways to share Jesus with people around yeah, you. Yeah, amen. So, amen to that. And uh, Karen, thank you so much for being with us um, today. It's highly likely, I think, that many of us involved in this online conversation today wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our initial involvement in Rob's life and work and ministry. Uh, we learned so much about sharing Jesus by serving at Rob's side. Uh, two more members of our team in Methodist Evangelicals together join us now, Marion Izzard and Derek Ballston. Uh, Marion uh, wears many hats uh, General Secretary, Administrator, Editor of Met Connection. Marion, um, you worked with Rob for many years and ended up as Coordinator of Easter People and Deputy Director of Share Jesus International. So it's uh, wonderful to have you on our team with us. Uh, why don't you share some uh, memories, some reflections uh, with us of your time serving with Rob? Yeah, thank you, David. Well, Rob was a great believer in people. He saw their potential, he took them where they were at and gave them the freedom to develop and use their gifts and he encouraged them to be the people that God created them to be. Well my time working with Rob and the team was a huge privilege and um, what was initially envisaged as six months to a year turned out to be 22 years and it was a roller coaster of an adventure working with Rob as a visionary. Um, I was involved in the managing and coordinating of many touring projects, um, Easter people and other events with a vision to bring renewal to individuals, to churches and to the Methodist denomination, as well as to engage and involve people at all different levels, which was at the heart of, of Rob's ministry. And I was given amazing opportunities to develop my gifts and skills during that time, as well as to develop a huge network of connections, of relationships and friendships, many of which I still have today. I think really the, the legacy of Rob's ministry um, is not about the huge organisation that went into the intricacy of different projects or the Easter People programme, but it's all about changed lives, lives transformed by encountering Jesus, uh, enabling people to engage with Jesus and encouraging and equipping them to be the people they were created to be and to share that with others too. So thank you. Thanks, Marion. That's wonderful. And uh, Derek, we're so grateful for everything that you do for us uh, on our team. So I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, perhaps you could tell us why everyone watching should join us in partnering with uh, Methodist Evangelicals together. I serve as the development worker for MET. For myself and my family, we have been positively impacted by Rob Frost and his various ministries, especially through Easter people and the Share Jesus missions. These ministries have helped me to hold firm to the evangelical faith and grow in the spirit-filled life both are with, of which are within Methodism's DNA. As our name, Methodist Evangelicals Together suggests, sharing Jesus today is an important part of our movement. We do this through teaching days, residential conferences, online training, and by publishing an inspirational magazine three times a year. We have also produced What Way, 
14 short videos to help church youth groups in their sharing of Jesus. Matt continues to encourage and equip ordinary Christians in ordinary churches to share the love and truth of Jesus through words and works and in the power of the Holy Spirit. To find out more and to partner with us, visit methodistevangelicals.org.uk. Well, it's amazing how from small beginnings, great things can grow. Methodist Evangelicals Together was launched at Rob Frost's last great event, the very last Easter people in 2007. It's been wonderful to celebrate just in a small way today, his legacy in this, the 20th anniversary of Share Jesus International, which he launched. In the end, at heart, we're all of us, all of us joining in this online celebration today. We're all ordinary Christians in ordinary churches, doing an extraordinary thing, trusting the Lord to take what we offer him and use it to share Jesus with a world in need. So thank you for joining us today and thank you to all our guests. It's time for us now to say goodbye and God bless. Goodbye. <laughs>